Today, the creator of Dyad is in the studio to blow your mind, man. This episode of New Challenger is brought to you by Audible.com. Welcome to the show. I'm Anthony. Yesterday, I reviewed Dyad, which is this insanely intense tunnel running game that messes with your senses. I loved it. I gave it a nine. And in the studio today is Sean McGrath, the game's creator, and David Kanaga, who is the, uh, the composer on the game. Now, a lot of people are looking at this game, and they're thinking, oh, I get it. It's like, it's like a wipeout. It's like a res. I get it. What is different about this than some other games that we've seen that are like it? Oh, there's nothing else like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, just, there's nothing. Like, you know, people say it's like, oh, it's like Res or it's like something. It's because they're, they're, they're trying to put it into something that they understand, and they understand Res and they understand these other games. So it's like, oh, I know, and I've seen something like that. Mm, yeah, they have it. Once you play it, it's just like, oh yeah, no, there's nothing else. So, so what, what are you trying? What were you trying to do with Dyad that's different? Um, I was trying to make it an extension of your brain and your body. And how do you do that? Uh, by playing a lot of Dyad <laughs> and changing it over and over and over again until it feels like it's just like it's. A natural part of you. So this is something where, uh, you know, in my review I mentioned, it's definitely like it's definitely playing with you in, t in terms of sound, in terms of visuals, to kind of to make you nervous sometimes, to make you calm sometimes, to trick you sometimes. Yeah. Is is there a kind of like a theory or a science behind the way you use sound and light to affect people that way? I don't know. <laughs> Like maybe I don't yeah. know. That sounds like a lot of reading that I didn't want to do. So okay. I just I just did everything by instinct. I didn't. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So when you when you guys were working on it and uh, and David, you came in to to do the audio. Audio and the visuals and the gameplay are so intertwined in this mm. game. How do you work together, especially in two different places? Because you're in Oakland, California. You mm. are in uh, Canada. Way up there. Way yeah. up there in Canada. How do you kind of work together to get the sound working with the gameplay, working with the level design? Do you want to answer that? Sure. Well, I mean, for sound, the way I approached it is like so much of the game was there, you know, the mechanics of it before I started doing the sound and the music. And how I approached it was for every like change of state in the game or object in the game or whatever, every interaction in the game, I would just create a, a corresponding piece of music for it. You gotta create a lot of music like that, but it that's kind of the science of it, really. It's a simple process. You just do that and you just work a long time. So <laughs> it, it, was it complicated? Because in different levels, I mean you're saying that, oh, well, every time it changes, there's a different sound, but it's not like every mechanic has a certain sound. When you play different mm -hmm. levels, things that are familiar to you have different sounds, they change into different colors. How do you kind of decide on that and, and kind of keep it consistent for the player still? For me, it was in just whatever, instinct. I don't know how he worked. Oh yeah, I think beyond that, like the one scientific tip that I gave you, <laughs> I think it's just impulse after that. You just, yeah. So, did you, so you come up with, with levels and mechanics first and then you come in and you write music to fit. And after that, is there kind of like a back and forth to kind of tweak it, so maybe like, oh, oh yeah. this song would work a little better if this happened in the level. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Like, he'd go mm. in, and he did, I think he did like most of the bass work in Oakland, and then it'd be like, oh, okay, this is pretty good, and then he'd come up to, to Toronto for a month or two, and then like, would make it really good. So, what, like, the really good part of it was made in Toronto. Okay. When he came over. <laughs> That's such a Toronto thing to say. <laughs> it's true, actually. You every, guys. Everything, everything good was made in Toronto, and that's that. You can take that and apply that to everything. Very I'm cool. Just so, uh, you know, I, I absolutely love this thing, and really, the the only way to kind of get it, like Sean said, is to really is to really play it and, and to kind of see it being played. Like game clips and stuff like that really don't work. So you, you guys are going to play a level for us today. I'll play a level, but you're still not going to understand what's going on. Right? Okay, okay. Maybe you can give us maybe you can give us a little a little running commentary as you're playing. Do you know what level you're going to play? Uh, no, I'll just go pick one at random. Okay, cool. So we are going to show that off in just a second. But first, I wanted to thank Audible for sponsoring the show today. You know, Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod or your MP3 player, played back anywhere, anytime, choose from books in every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, all of the things. 
all of the things. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash challenger to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, that is audiblepodcast.com slash challenger for your free audiobook. Boom. So, let me get the music up here. Get a controller into your hand. This one, ex- this one's pretty good because it, ex- yeah. it explains a lot. Okay. Know. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this was this is a race one, and there and there are levels that have all kinds of different, um, different goals. This one is just to kind of race through five different sectors as quickly as you can. Yeah, every level has different goals. So you know, you're just you're going behind, through the track, hooking on pairs of enemies. Yeah. So every time you hook on two blue enemies, it gives you a boost. Yeah. So you want to just hook, you know, hook pairs, or you got a zip line in this level, so uh, creates that like purple track between the two enemies, and you want to ride on that, and that'll get you your speed. And then it, that's what happens when you run into things, so you shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> you'll notice that there's like a circle around the enemies that you hook onto. Okay. Uh, I'll try to slow down so you can see it. Like there's a circle there, that enemy there has a circle. Right. So you want to go through that circle, and that uh, fills up those two bars that are flashing at the bottom, and then you get to see this pretty light show. Um, pretty graph. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, oh, now I've exchanged. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. And these enemies are crazy. So when you hook these guys, they come towards you. Yeah, and they leave a zip line behind them. And then they, they leave a circle, but um, it's extremely difficult to get into. <laughs> so you can see how, like, everything is constantly changing on you at all times here. And there, there are times where, like, it'll teach you this mechanic. I think this is at the end of a, a batch of levels where we were previously in a very slow paced level that uh, introduced us to these guys. Right. And we had done a level that introduced us to zip lines, and now you're kind of combining all of these things. Yeah, this is a good level that sort of combines quite a few quite a few of the mid-game mechanics, I think. I think the late game mechanics are they're the best, but they're like they're way too strange to explain on on a, on a show. Like when you play them, it's just like, oh, this is totally obvious, but like yeah. to actually see how the immunity system works. I think it's probably too weird. Yeah. So I, I was saying before, when you go through that circle, it collects energy, and you've got those two bars flashing at the bottom. And if you press square, you shoot yourself forward really fast, mm-hmm. and you kill all the enemies in front of you, right? So I'm gonna yeah. try to line up, kill some enemies. Yeah. It's not the best lance I've ever seen. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. It's hard. There's light shining in my eyes. Yeah, this is, um, I remember specifically thinking that this is the point in the game that I got to where it just started getting like, like I was I was breezing through and I was getting like three stars, two stars, three stars, two stars, and this is the point in the game where I was finally like, oh, this is this is getting a little rough. Yeah, it should be, you know, it's not bad rough. Let's not say bad rough. It's just throwing a lot at you. Well, yeah. So it's 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 a really forgiving game because uh, to get, I'm playing horribly. If you play this bad, then. Ugh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 like it's a super forgiving game because you can just one star it and then like see all the levels, right? Because we, yeah. I didn't want I didn't want to make all this cool stuff and like limit it to people who are like only good, and I thought that was a really boring way to sort of like limit, you know, limit content that everyone yeah. would enjoy. But the trophy levels, um, there's like a, there's an alternate level, alternate mode to each level, which is just uh, super hard. They're hard. <laughs> They're hard to do and, the and they're hard to unlock and they're the best part of the game if you like <laughs> if you like you know hard challenging games. So I wanted to make it so you know anyone can see you know all the cool stuff that they would enjoy and if you want to play the hard part of the game, it's there too and it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> David, tell me about the the music track on this level. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> God, that's too open ended a question. Is this one of the levels, am I noticing, is this one of the ones where the tempo is going up as he's no. speeding up? No, no, this isn't. I mean, this has a lot of mechanics going on. So this has got the zip lines, it'll play a loop and that, and then the the lancing, when you land something, it'll bring in a bunch of layers of loops. Yeah. And and then I think this has, you know, the three or five different sectors, and there's some different things that change each time. I think it has seven chords, I think. Show us the trophy version of this one. This okay. is hard. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not okay. Why don't I show you the playground version? Show me the playground version. All right, let's, so what, let's go see some playgrounds. Yeah, show me a good playground. Yeah, this is a good playground. So once you play the level once, you get the playground. So you can go to the remix. It's called remix, but playground probably would have been better. Uh, so you can come here, and you can, like, turn on options, right? I'll turn off collisions, because I don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. Um, turn on relativistic distortion, because... Why not? That's what happens when you approach the speed of light. Weird stuff happens. <laughs> right, of course. Yeah, because why wouldn't you sure. want to do that? Why wouldn't you put that in a video game? Of course, game? that's what we, we all knew that that was what relativistic distortion was. You didn't have to tell us that. Right, Sean. so I'm sorry. 
I, I, mis, uh, I misjudged your audience. <laughs> I apologize for that. So yeah, like, you know, it looks kind of like the normal game right now, but I'm gonna yeah. slow it down with the trigger. And then I'm gonna land. Wow, and so normally this would be like blazing fast, right? Now. Well, here, I'll just do that. Yeah. And you can use the triggers <laughs> to like, just to like mess with it. Yeah, and they respond like it's full analog on those triggers too. So like it'll slow Ooh. as you push down farther. Oh yeah. And like there's three sectors in this particular level, so I'm gonna jump. I call ahead. this mode completely sober mode. That's yeah. what I call this one. Yeah. This is the one that you play completely sober, right? I highly recommend it. <laughs> and not to play it in any other way. That would be bad for your brain. So what else do we have turned on here? We've got the triggers for speed. Triggers for speed and the triggers for music too. So the music's being pitch shifted. Like it, it's somewhat quantized like to a maximum. So I think it's down an octave and up a fifth, I think. Um, so that it actually sounds, okay. sounds like reasonable. And you guys work together to kind of figure out exactly what that would be. Yeah, yeah. I think it's all David and I just programmed it. Um, so when you wrote the songs for this, did you have to write them thinking every one of these songs is going to be slowed down and it's got to be cool slowed down? Well, most songs are cool slowed down. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> most songs are, like, maybe even better, yeah. So I don't think you really need to think about that too much. But, um... Speeding it up, though. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, nah, it's good either way. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it you're, like, good. I, you're like, it's just the way songs work. <laughs> yeah, it's just if you slow it down, it's going to be better or whatever. Yeah, I think it's only you slow it down by an interval, right? Like a, yeah. a proper interval, it's going to sound fine. Yeah, that's what's nice about he's, when he says it's down an octave or whatever. That's exactly half speed at music. And if okay. music plays at three half speed, then that's a fifth up. And so there's all this, like, these math relationships and you things You guys put gritty. more thought into this than you're letting on. <laughs> There's more going on here than you're letting on. Well, that's just simple arithmetic. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a, a few. Yeah, we've got we got third grade math involved with this game. <laughs> yeah, so this is cool. Another thing that we do with the analog triggers that I'll show you mm -hmm. is um, in the main menu, you can just like I go to this level because it sounds really good. So um, all the, the menu is a musical instrument as well. So all these are played in the same key and at the same tempo. Okay. So if I swap between them, they should crossfade nicely. But you can use the analog triggers to speed it up <laughs> or to slow it down. And then the cross the crossfades happen in slow one too. Oh my gosh, I never noticed that. I never move between two levels with everything slowed down. And you can like when you open it up, yeah. the kick drum comes in. So now there's a kick, like there's no kick drum. Mm -hmm. Now there's a kick drum, but you can also like do the slow one. <laughs> <laughs> And then like, of course it's better, right? You can do it fast too, but it's slow. Yeah. And then like, you can use the, the right analog stick to like remix the music, so like, now it's changing the drums. There's like a vector synthesis on the drums. <laughs> and they just sound beautiful, but you could like just be ridiculous. What are the what are the medicinal marijuana laws in Toronto? I don't know anything about that. Okay. But like here, it's just. That's just. I don't know why that popped into my head. No. It's just a thing. No, I can't help you. Asking that. for a friend. I, I don't think. I don't think that's allowed. Okay. I don't think there's any of that. But yeah. So uh, I know here, what they're like in Oakland. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to know. Uh, I don't know anything about that sort of stuff. This is awesome. This is so much stuff to play with, and it looks amazing. You guys, you have to get it. It's out today on PSN. It's $14.99. You can get 20% off if you are a PlayStation Plus member. Thank you so much, Sean and David, for, for dropping by. Thanks for having us. This is Thank great. You. Uh, you can catch my full review of Dyad along with about a skillion other gaming videos every week on Rev3 Games. Just head over to YouTube.com slash Rev3 Games to watch and subscribe, and I will see you back here in the studio next week. I turned on, I turned on like, invert and then super slow one time, and it made me real sad.